you uh, asked or mentioned that you found it difficult to shop for fabric online. And I totally feel you on that. And I've seen a lot of people say that and um, it makes me a little sad because it's so much fun. And I'm not suggesting that you get into the kind of terrible habits that I have, but a lot of times, if you're anything like me, you live somewhere where there's just not a really good selection for you to be able to just pop in and get what you need or what you're fine, or even just for funsies, go browse. I mean, my Joann's is pretty limited. So, um, so one of my only options is to get things online. And it was tough at first to do that. So I just wanted to let you guys know what I did to try and help myself out so that I wasn't just buying random stuff. Now, I still buy things mistakenly. Um, I just did that. I think in my haul video, I, there was a sweater knit where I was like, I didn't know it was going to be this year. Well, a lot of it now, if I make a mistake, is down to because I just wasn't paying attention, as I often do. Also, I believe I also mentioned that I had been drinking prior to that purchase. So, but all that aside, here's kind of some things that I have used to help myself out. Number one, I got this book, Fabric Savvy, Sandra Bitsina. It's a threads book and it's just like a guide. So like, it just kind of tells you about stuff. So, well, that's a terrible example. So it'll tell you about the fabrics. So this one's on boiled wool. It'll tell you um, whether you need to pre-shrink it, um, laying it out, marking it, cutting it, interfacing thread needle, stitch length, seam finish. It tells you basically just about everything that you need to know about dealing with this fabric. And then it gives you a little bit of facts about it and how to care for it and things like that. And so this is just like, it's a good resource, but this doesn't really, this just once you have it in your hands, will kind of tell you how to deal with it. So this is helpful if I've bought something that I'm unfamiliar with, but as far as like actually choosing what I want or knowing what to expect when it comes to me, um, that's what swatches are for basically. And so let's see, I have a little bag full of swatches that I've ordered from Mood. Um, uh, they will send them to you. Mood, you have to pay for the swatches. You can choose whatever fabric they have in the store and you pay like a dollar or two, sometimes a little bit more depending on what it is. And they send them, um, it's pretty quickly. Uh, and they come with a little tag on the back that tells you what it is. And then, you know, this is a good, this is a good size swatch. So it's enough to give you a feel for the drape. And I just like, if I saw something that I was interested in, you know, click it, shove it in your wish list or whatever. And then you'll have a whole wish list full of things that you might want to use someday. And then before you order for real, just get a swatch. I would say that a lot of the swatches that I've ordered are not things that I'm interested in. And some of them are things I'm interested in, but maybe wouldn't work for the project that I thought they were. So, um, like I said, you can get these from Mood. A lot of places offer them. And if they don't like specifically state that you can order a swatch, you can always just ask them, like shoot them an email and be like, can I get a swatch? Another place that does the same thing is fabric.com. Here's a swatch that I ordered from them. This one is huge. This is the gigantic swatch. And this was actually one of the options I was going to use to make that cape. And I decided this is just too crazy for something that's already pretty out there. So I didn't end up using this, but it might come in handy for something else. So I also saved it and I have space that I can do that. So I understand that not everyone does, but I mean, Matt, you could put your swatches in a little book. And then also it's good to save them because then you have a reference for what exactly this thing is. Right, so the next time I wanna know what this particular fabric feels like, even if it's not this particular piece that I want, you know, then I'll know and I'll have a good reference for, oh yeah, it felt, if I wanted, what is that, what even is this? I don't even know. 85% polyester, 15% wool, Telio wool. Now I know what that feels like. And it feels pretty nice. So yeah, so get the swatches, order them, pay for them if you have to. I only do that if I'm pretty sure that that's a thing that I might want to use. And then the other option, um, as far as swatches go is you could get into like a, if, if the fabric store of your choice has a swatch 
club, we'll call it that, um, you can use that. Now, I have two services that I'm subscribed to. I am subscribed to Julie's Picks, which I have mentioned a thousand times. And they, every month, will send me um, a swatch book. And those books look, I have a whole drawer full of them. They look something like this. It's just paper, paper books. I have one for, like, every month for the past year. And then um, they just send you, like, I don't know. I think there's, like, 30 of them per, per month. And these are their special price things just for the the um, PIX Club members. Now, this costs, I think, $50 a year. And But honestly, the vast majority of my stash you see behind me here is from this catalog because I can see it. I can think, oh, I like that. And then, you know, I can make a decision on whether or not I want it right then and there. You can touch it. You can feel it. It tells you what it is, what you might want to use it for and all that stuff. And so I do that and then like I said, the majority of the things I buy come directly from this packet. If Mood had this option, I would probably have a lot more crap from Mood. If Fabric.com had a thing like this, I would have a lot more stuff from Fabric.com. Julie's Picks, Fabric Mart, they get to me first. So I mean, they get the majority of my budget because they're the ones who have tempted me with their swatches. So yeah. So I would say Fabric Mart gets most of my business just because they catch my um, my moment of weakness where I'm like, oh yeah, I like that. I would say Mood and Fabric.com get the majority of my I'm looking for a very specific thing business because they just I think they just have more stuff. So um, so yeah, and then so I'm subscribed to that, and then I also just recently Vogue Fabrics has their own version of that and now you have to staple these in here yourself and i will say that i'm not going to go full blown into like what these are because um the channel inside the hem has already done like a full blown here's what these things are and here's the deal with it and just did a full run through of everything this is just i'm just trying to tell you these are things that made me more comfortable with buying fabric online things like this things like these swatches because you can touch it, you can feel it, and then you know. Um, another thing that I did in the beginning was I went out and I ordered Fabric Mart. Look, they're not paying me. I wish that they were. They're not, though. So this is all free advertising, Fabric Mart. They sell educational swatch packets. This one is for silk, and it gives you a bunch of swatches of different types of... Oh, this one's awful. This one's a little the staples came out so it'll tell you what they are and it'll give you an example of what they feel like and so this is a silk wool and suiting I have they have sewing with cotton and they have sewing with stretch knits and each one of these packets has basically what you would need to know about that particular category of fabric that way you can more easily choose it so they'll tell you what um, Cotton jersey, rayon jersey, wool jersey, cotton knit, rayon ponty knit, polyester ponty knit. That's just this page. And they give you any, that way you have an example. So if a pattern says you need ponty knit, you'll know what it feels like. There you go. So that has been extremely helpful as well, especially with like, um, like, wool stuff because that's the thing that I'm the least familiar with. The other thing that I do um, on a pretty regular basis is if I'm out shopping and I touch something and I like the fabric that whatever it is is made out of, I will just pop in and look at the tag. It's not going to tell me what it is, like it's not going to tell me like what the weave is or you know what type of knit it is, but I can at least find out the fiber content. That way I can get the feel for what it's made of. Right, so I can feel what like the difference between a jersey, uh, rayon jersey, and a, you know, cotton jersey would feel like, stuff like that. And then if I like it, I can be on the lookout for that when I'm buying stuff. Oh, I know I like this kind of thing, and I do the same thing in my own closet. So I will look at the tags of things that I really like to wear and see what they're made out of. I will also look at the tags of things that wear out very quickly and see what they're made out of because maybe I don't want that. So 
that's basically how I do it. I hope that that was helpful. But um, I think most places will take returns. So, you've, I mean, just jump in. Even if you make a mistake, maybe it's a happy mistake. Uh, I've had a couple of happy mistakes, things I didn't think were going to work out, and they did. I've also had a couple of disasters where I order some stuff, and then I get it, and I'm like, meh. So, you know, it happens, but, I mean, it's it's up to you. It's just an easy way, especially if you're um, in a fabric desert. So, that's where I am, sadly. So, I hope that was helpful. Okay, till next time.